Today we have our last lecture in the course. Uh, uh, we're going to learn about multispectral imagery from drones. So objectives of this uh, lecture is first to understand the electromagnetic spectrum. Then we're going to recognize differences between visual spectrum and multispectral sensor sensors. Uh, also, we're going to focus on spatial bands and uh, what bands are available in drone cameras and then uh, at last we will uh, learn how to utilize the photogrammetry software for processing of multispectral imagery so it's going to be um, edges of meta shape uh, in the in the assignment today but instead of um, processing rgb data we're going to be in introducing uh, a, a spectral uh, multispectral layers um, and uh, then we're going to focus on uh, vegetation indices, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about each uh, one that we're going to calculate during the assignment. So, so far we have been working in, um, uh, in uh, the visible spectrum, so the visible spectrum is what the human eye, human eye can see. Uh, so it is between 400 and 700 nanometer, nanometers. and uh, uh, we can see variety of colors. Uh, the lower um, frequencies is the violet and then the higher is red. And the wavelengths uh, can be also shorter. Uh, so then uh, it is uh, the ultraviolet spectrum or longer and it co turns into infrared. Uh, and they are not then visible to our eyesight. So even though we cannot see them, the invisible wave bands are very indicative of agronomic characteristics of soil, plants, and crops. Here, uh, I will strongly advise you to watch this short movie on YouTube. It's about five minutes, and it introduces you to the concept of uh, multispectral uh, analysis of of the of the uh, of the imagery, and it is um, focused on the satellite data or the data from airplanes. But you can also apply it to our uh, drone, multispectral drone data. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum that I was mentioning before, and you can see our wave, uh, the wavelengths that uh, the human eye can see uh, is only the blue, green, and red spectrum, and then on the on a little bit over 700 nanome nanometers, you have this very narrow red edge. Um, band uh, that um, has a lot of variation in, in a uh, healthy plant and then uh, if you go further you have the near infrared and these five bands are the most commonly used for multispectral uh, cameras for drones. You can see here that there is a huge difference even from the green leaf like how uh, the, um, the leaf will uh, reflect different bands. It uh, depends if the leaf is dead, stressed or healthy. You can see the near infrared variation there. The healthy leaf uh, uh, reflects more near in the near infrared band um, and also uh, more in the green band uh, itself. So what are the multispectral sensors? First, we uh, we have to uh, stress that the advances in multispectral sensor sensors for drone led to a rapid growth in the use for capturing not only visible uh, spectra, but also bands outside the visible, such as near infrared and red edge channels. As I mentioned before, those are the most common uh, commonly used for uh, for drones. Uh, so they provide data that are spectrally similar to imagery captured from satellites and manned aircraft and it's putting a very powerful tool into our hand into hands of users so how do we do that we uh, each photo is actually a reflectance map from the multispectral uh, in multispectral ground the the ad sensor uh, red reflectance or radi radiance is the radium flux received by the sensor it's a function of the surface radius and the atmospheric disturbance between the su surface and the sensor so it can be calibrated by reflectance, reflectance standard. We're going to talk about uh, this uh, reflective targets that are uh, used for the calibration. Uh, so it can uh, be calibrated to absolute reflectance signature stored uh, as a numeric digital values in the image. And the output is the reflectance map or imagery with multiple bands. Um, 
so this is the um, uh, the picture, the um, graphic that uh, explains it. So you can see that there is here uh, the source of light. So in our case is the sun because we are taking the aerial photos, and this is the surface that radiates different values of um, on different bands. So you can see here, for example, there is a green, red, and near infrared. Um, layer in that and each one is a raster with different values for the photo and then after that you can have uh, the multi multiple uh, layers of the spectral re reflectance and you can calculate vegetation index or a lot of indices uh, based on that uh, so uh, more in the book fundamentals of capturing and processing drone uh, imagery and data you have this book and the supplemental materials uh, listed on the website and I strongly encourage you to look at uh, look at uh, the uh, chapter 17 uh, so this is the picture of uh, commonly used cameras for drones you can see the a1 it has six bands so at each trigger of the camera uh, camera actually takes six pictures with each of the uh, of the sensors so you have six bands this one uh, has five and this one probably just four uh, uh, if maybe this is the um, uh, the R RGB uh, and this one has only four uh, so you can see uh, here are the uh, specifications so the uh, mica sense red edge and parrot sequoia will be the most commonly used ones um, and you can see the some of them have a lot of uh, near infrared bands so it's just not one but multiple bands in the near infrared red spectrum so it divides the near infrared spectrum into shorter uh, shorter uh, uh, layers so what is the green band? Uh, green band, we have them in our visible spectrum, so it's the reflected energy between 500 and 600 nanometers. Um, and uh, of course, uh, it's why we see the plants as green, because it reflects the most green light. Uh, the peak is around 550 and uh, it is correlated with amount of chlorophyll. So the greener the uh, is um, the greener uh, the plant is, the more uh, green band, the more uh, the larger value of this raster is in the green band. Uh, so um, uh, the greatest uh, left reflectance is uh, in range of 550, and um, chemical compounds called chlorophyll strongly absorbs the radiation. So the leaves appear greener uh, to us in the summer when the chlorophyll content is maximum. So there is also red band. It's very important in calculating the vegetation indices. It corresponds to the reflected energy in the 600, 600 to 700 nanometers. And um, it's also the strong chlorophyll absorption in this band results in low reflectance. So it varies significantly uh, in relation to factors such as biomass, leaf area index, soil history, crop type, humidity, and plant stress. So you can, uh, um, for most crops, um, this band gives excellent contrast between the plants and the soil, and it's extensively used for compiling most of the vegetation indices in agriculture. You can see here is the um, red edge, um, uh, mm, very small mm, uh, band. It is a very narrow one between 700 and 730 nanometers and it co corresponds to the entry point of, of near infrared and it's a uh, it's the point of sudden change in reflectance. You can see here the vegetation, how much it changes the reflectance just within this short, uh, narrow band uh, of red edge. So it's very sensitive to plant stress and provides information on the chlorophyll too. The near infrared, we saw it on the previous 
picture too. It corresponds to the wavelengths from 700 uh, nanometers to 1.3 micrometers range, and this has the strongest reflectance of the bands uh, studied. There is a very strong correlation between this reflectance and the level of chlorophyll. So also this band is used um, extens extensively for vegetation in this is calculation, and uh, healthy vegetation absorbs blue and red light energy to fuel photosynthesis and create chlorophyll. The plant with more chlorophyll will reflect more near infrared energy than an unhealthy plant. Uh, so analyzing this spectrum of uh, bo ab both absorption, absorption and reflection in visible and in infrared wavelengths provide information about the plant's health and pr productivity. So along with the red spectral band, this one is used extensively for compiling most of the vegetation indices in agriculture. Also these uh, indices that we're going to calculate uh, today uh, in the assignment. So near infrared is sensitive to the leaf cellular structure and provides critical data to monitor changes in crop health. And there are multiple uses for this uh, for this band. Uh, you can calculate uh, soil property and moisture analysis. You can assess crop health and stress. Uh, you can also use it for water management, erosion analysis, and even plant counting. So what are the benefits? Why do we use multispectral imaging in addition to the RGB uh, uh, visual spectrum? So we can identify pests, we can identify disease and weeds, and uh, thanks to that we can uh, optimize pesticide, pesticide uh, usage and crop sprays through early detection. Uh, we also can provide data on soil fertility and then refine this fertilization by detecting nutrient deficiencies. So it gets a help with land management and uh, it is the decision whether to take the agricultural land in or out of production or rotate crops. Uh, you can count plants and determine the population uh, or spatial issues. You can estimate crop yield. You can also measure irrigation because uh, uh, the water is um, is reflected in a very different way than the soil or the vegetation. So we can make improvements to land areas, such as install drainage systems and waterways based on the multispectral data. We can also assess the damage to crops, so not only early detection of the disease, but also then estimation of the damage after um, either farm machinery um, or uh, or just uh, damage uh, from the weather conditions. And then uh, the, you can also survey fencing and farm buildings. Of course, the fences and buildings will be reflected differently than the vegetation and the soil. And also that's kind of like um, on the edge of our topic here because we didn't talk so much about thermal cameras, but thermal cameras are also used for monitoring lifestyle Stock, livestock will be uh, more uh, will be uh, warmer than the uh, than the area uh, be, uh, around it. So we can locate the livestock at night, even at night time. With uh, and then you have plenty of other uses uses for thermal cameras. So how does the processing of the multispectral drone imagery different? differ from the RGB. So the first thing we need to do, we need to perform the radiometric calibration. So what you see on this photo is a target. So here uh, the calibration is carried annually, but selected the area of reflectance target. So this one, we know the number of uh, the value of reflectance and you can assign it. So here you scan this, um, this QR code and you can input the, the uh, values of the reflectance of this target. So this can be collected before, after, during the flight, but you have to do it before each flight. And uh, there are just, you hold the drone above this, this target and take manually take pictures for all bands. Now we move into last uh, topic of this lecture, so veg vegetation indices. So the reflectance map can be used to calculate vari variety of spectral indices. There is a form of an image enhancement where the bands are mathematically combined or transformed to permit better interpretation of the information in the image. So they were developed mostly in 1970s uh, for different scientific purposes. 
So most common indices uh, are vegetation indices and they highlight the biophysical characteristic of vegetation and are sensitive to, to the photosynthetic activity, canopy structure and veg vegetation composition. So you see here the, the, uh, the variation in reflectance. Um, it is uh, introduced induced by a ditch. In this case, the soil in the ditch nourishes the vegetation, allowing it to grow more vigorously than the surrounding vegetation. This difference is really reflected in higher reflectance uh, in, of near infrared radiation. So examples of vegetation indices, we will start with the visual atmospheric resistance index, BARI. It is uh, one that is calculated solely on the RGB data. So you see the green, red, and blue uh, 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 layers are used. And um, it is or originally designed for satellite imagery, just like most of the uh, vegetation indices. And it's minimally sensitive to atmospheric effects, allowing for vegetation to be estimated in wide variety of environments. So it emphasizes the visible por portion of the spectrum and mitigates illumination differences and atmospheric effects. It's ideal for RGB or color images because it utilizes all three color bands. So here it is the very calculated for our field uh, that we are going to um, process um, in the assignment. So the sunlight reaches the Earth atmosphere and it's scattered in all directions by grasses and particles in the air. But blue light tends to scatter more than all the other colors. And it's why we see um, the um, light, uh, the sky as blue. So the vegetation index accounts to for presence of blue in its calculation of spectral data. So the next uh, RGB uh, based index is a redness index. So you can calculate it. Uh, mm, it is the, using red, blue, and green uh, layers, um, and it it is uh, accounts for the soil redness intensity which can be related to the soil, pr soil properties such as mineral composition, water content, and uh, soil particle size. So we don't really see that much. Uh, our area is uh, covered by vegetation, but you can see here where the vegetation is, like for example, this is the road. So on the road, there we have very low uh, values of this index. There is another one that uh, is calculated from the RGB data. It's a brightness index, and it provides an overall measure of the combined magnitude of reflectance from all three bands, um, and is useful for differentiating bright soils from soils with higher organic matter. And the most uh, commonly used vegetation index, index is NDVI, so Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, and it's calculated from near-infrared and red um, uh, uh, layers, and the red and near-infrared uh, are evaluated to calculate a vegetation index value to detect differences in green canopy area, emphasizing the green color of a healthy plant. So you can see here, um, uh, and in real-time calculation and NDVI, it is commonly used as an indicator of chlorophyll content in several different types of crops. And the difference between the green and the red value of the image uh, dif uh, differentiates between plants and soil. The value uh, ranges from uh, minus 1 to 1, and the common range for the green vegetation is 0.2 to 0.8. Uh, then we have the infrared percentage vegetation index, which is very uh, f functionally um, uh, similar to NDVI, but it is computer computationally faster. It also ranges uh, just for, from 0 to 1, not from negative 1 to 1. Uh, we also have difference vegetation index, which is uh, distinguishes between soil and vegetation. So we can see here vegetation in, is in our um, uh, yellow to red and a little bit of green but when you go to the blues you can see that this is bare soil so you can see it's on the road here and also the tracks from the tractor um, zero indicates bare soil and uh, less than zero you can uh, indicate water and those greater than zero indicates vegetation you can also have a uh, normalized difference red edge index, which is very similar to NDVI, but instead of red band, you put here the red edge uh, band. 
and it gives insights to crawl for contact in mid to late season crops. It's sensitive to crawl for contact in leaves and uh, variability in the reef area and so, uh, soil background effects. And the last one that I have uh, for you is the Soil Adjusted Vegetation Index. So it takes to account also near infrared and red uh, and uh, when the NDVI outputs tend to vary with soil color, soil moisture, and saturation effects from high density vegetation, this um, vegetation index accounts for different uh, differential red and near infrared extension through the vegetation canopy. It minimizes the soil brightness and emphasizes data from vegetation. It's particularly used for uh, when the soil uh, quality varies substanti substantially within the single given uh, given area of interest. And uh, we we will calculate this index for our uh, for our area, but it's uh, not because it's mostly covered with vegetation, not uh, and does not vary uh, in soil so much. We will not see uh, a huge um, variation in the value. So this is it for um, for our uh, uh, lecture, and uh, now you are ready to start uh, analyzing your multispectral data in the assignment that is linked on the website.